three minutes and they ask me, come on, come on, boy, we need to rain, we want to keep the time up. Does anybody have a couple comments? Stand or just by yourself, Stan. Mm -hmm. Did you call your mark? My name is Charles Hayden. I live at 726 South Church Street. And I know this ain't on the agenda, but I'd like to answer. Under the blight program, block program, whatever you want to call it. I'm sorry. That's not a thing you bring up. You have to take it up with whoever said that. There, we don't have anything to do with the church at all. You can put the stuff in there and out of it. I think this program went through y'all first, though, before it got to council. Pretty sure of it. We reviewed it. Yeah. We didn't have any so we to on that. On one of them that they tore down. It was still listed as valued at $48,000. They tore it down, put a module in the plaza. What's wrong with the town? Are we money crazy? Are we control crazy? Because we sure ain't public crazy. I mean, this, this guy right here wants to control everything. It's ridiculous. That's all I have to say. We'll take your comments on the rebuttal. May I yes. ask uh, who is who is the gentleman taking the building that that what was his purpose? Are you not telling us? What? What? You're recording, right? Who me? Yeah. Why? Why you say that? Oh, I don't know. Asking that if you would identify yourself and why you were filming this tonight, please. Uh, just because I can, I guess. Sorry, I can't hear you. Because I can. Do you have permission to do it? Sure. Have you given permission? I'm not giving permission. But permission, giving permission came. Tonight. Permission came from my father. He died, he died for my rights as a Green Beret to uphold my rights. First Amendment, if you want to violate, you go ahead. Freedom of the press, and I can address my government. That's fine. Right. And would you mind identifying yourself? No. You don't want to. I know we've discussed it several times. I just want to we're always going to be involved in this rental uh, inspections. Well, we're, we're going to be talking about tonight if you're just hanging around. I mean, we'll be dressed in Okay, because the last time I stayed, yeah. I think you was up here. I stood here and got shot down by one of them said that my time had elapsed and that I wasn't able to speak yeah, to we'll them. Actually, Roger, uh, this whole panel has not, it's been several months since we talked about other right. things that have been coming up. Uh, yeah, I think and me I, and you have talked in yeah. length about it, and I was just trying to, you know, wrap my head around what all is going to be involved. And right now, to be honest with you, it, it's the beginning stages of it. I mean, okay. at the end of the day, 
you know, once we present this to council, council, mm -hmm. you got three choices. They can say, okay, we like the way it is. We don't think it's unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Or we think it is unreasonable. Let's just can it all. Mm -hmm. Or let's take this part out and add this. So it's just, it's just, we're just starting on it like Okay. That. All right. Well, I just, you know, I wouldn't go away and mess up again. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Anything else? Come up a little earlier to get it set up and, and, and going, but as you can see, it's not working. The one over on the far side is. Uh, just to just to make planning commission aware, uh, we did discuss this rezoning application at our last meeting. Uh, the way the the required advertisement goes from the state of Virginia, I couldn't meet the deadline uh, until the next, the following council meeting. So there will be a joint public hearing on this. The application uh, was from Mr. and Mrs. Brown. They reside at 117 East Strother Street, uh, and it was on 419 and 24. Now here's a, an image of it, and I do apologize for this, but Mark, it's right behind your head. If y'all recall, 417 <coughs> sits off of Strother Street, and it's right behind, right beside the Henderson School, and right across the, the road from the parking lot county parking lot. So as long as I've been here, I know that it's been a residence. Uh, I think at one time, as we discussed, there was a, an attorney's office there. And the owners had approached me on the 19th and asked us to rezone it to, from commercial to R2. Uh, it is consistent with all the other properties around it. Uh, so that will actually be on the council agenda for the joint public hearing on the 15th, I believe. Yes. Yes, on the 15th. So I'm just going to make y'all aware of that. Uh, the next, the next portion that we're talking about is: Is there any questions on the rezoning? Is everybody up to speed on that before we move forward? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, everything, everything there, uh, I, it is definitely consistent with the, with the, all the zoning around. It. So, uh, uh, honestly, I, I don't think that's going to be a problem because, like I say, for as long as I've been here, which is twenty-one years, it's 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 been a home. Is it home? Is the whole building home? Or part of the rent? Or how is no, it? I think it was an office to begin with. And then the, uh, and I can't remember who, whose office it was. Okay. okay, so that was way before my time, so I don't know the history behind that. It's occupied right now? It is occupied. It's a regular family home. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Any questions? So on the, on the next uh, agenda, uh, point is uh, the medical arts behavioral science. We've already got it in our zone. Uh, we were talking last meeting about the, the map and depicting it on the map of what that what that could look like. Now if you and I do apologize, I know this is part especially for Mark, but behind Mark and behind Rex you'll see a map up there. Last time if you remember uh, Rex had a really good point. Of course, he owns the property that's still zoned commercial in the front, and he has approached council several years ago. Let me zoom in here for y'all so I can sort of point this out. This parcel that's right here, and I hope y'all can see my mouse. Can y'all see my mouse moving there? Hopefully. That parcel right there Rick said, Rick said approach council several years ago to ask 
to have that rezone from liberal arts to, to uh, commercial several years ago. And as we were going through the new rezoning, uh, the rezoning for the medical arts, uh, we were discussing where it could be, and, and we thought that the highest and best use of that property right there would be medical arts behavioral science. However, after Rex brought us to our attention that he had approached council for that several years ago to get it rezoned to commercial general, I tend to agree. I think if somebody had approached council already to have property rezoned from one zone to another, we should we, we should be reasonable enough to allow that to stay that way. Uh, that map right there don't reflect it. This was in the agenda prior to tonight's meeting, and I just I mean after the I didn't want to change it after the agenda went on. But can everybody see that area right there? Can y'all see my mouse moving there? It's that off. one parcel right there. It's all off of 16. No, it's all off of Pendleton and Atkins Street. And that's a dedicated street. It's right in front of that right spot. That is a dedicated street. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. This is very hard. Yeah. Here, right here is Acton. You can see my mouse. But the parcel that Rex owns is right here. And he had approached council several years ago to get it rezoned from medical arts to commercial. Uh, if, if, if I may verify, Todd, this is the Andrews Ghetto Building. Yes, sir. That creates a nice little area. Yeah, Pendleton Street runs right there in front of Andrews, and mm -hmm. Acton is right directly behind that paper street. If I'm not mistaken, isn't it paved out? The, the pavement sort of ends right there, right before you get to the one going up the hill, correct? No, it ends. Uh, <clears throat> I can't see it. On the, hold on a second. Let me try to remember from my other computer and then we'll take a look at it a little better. The pavement, the pavement ends behind uh, Ford. Just get the little corner of the right. Okay. And then it's right. This might give you a little bit better idea. So Acton Street, here's East Main, right here. Here's East Main. Main Street goes around. Acton comes up and goes down right here. Now with the shadows, I still see, I think that's pavement right there. No, that's gravel. That's gravel? Yeah, it ends, the pavement ends right there. Right here? Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, so right there about the end of 105 and, and 140. It's got a shadow there, and I'm having a hard time seeing it myself. But if... If I turn on the current zoning of that, these colors are really close, but if I identify, now Rex Hill owns these three right here. If I look at that, you all will see that that's still medical arts. So if you look right there, and I know it's small, but that, that says medical arts. So those three parcels are still medical arts, but you still would be included in the medical arts behavioral science. But this one parcel right here, since he's approached council already and council's granted the, the, the rezoning, I, I, I would agree that we wouldn't change that because he's already petitioned council to have it rezoned to commercial. We would omit that section and let it come back down wherever medical arts runs from there. 
so we can get blood not there because all that's that, all that's a splash right there is commercial. But we follow this line right through here, down wherever our, our medical heart is. All that green is where it's been followed. What are the dimensions of breast under commercial general lot there? It's uh, <clears throat> sixty-six by uh, three hundred or something. Are you the town manager? It's existing, it's existing medical arts there. Are you the town manager? Could you inform uh, Miss Spencer not to delete her phone? She took a picture of me, Miss Freeman, because I want a FOIA request to everything that's on her phone. If you delete the photo, you put the camera. If you delete it, it's a felony. Can we ask you to delete what you're doing back there? I'm a private citizen. She's not. You're I'm a private citizen. She's not. If she deletes anything off that phone, it's a felony. I want a FOIA request to everything that's on that phone. She took a picture of me. That's a felony. And all of you witnessed it. You might want to bring at it, but your next council meeting. Can I ask who's asked? Ask Hilltop News. Pardon? Hilltop News. That she needs to be cited for a felony. She's a government official taking pictures of the public. Once you do that, I can FOIA request your phone. You should know that. Well, I mean, uh, we probably need to discuss on I mean, what y'all think might be reasonable for that. Do y'all think it's unreasonable that we were taking the existing medical art zone that, that's currently there with the exception of that? Because this, this, this picture here portrays that as medical art, but it's actually for commercial general. But it should follow that line right down to where, where it actually shows right there. So that's existing medical art. And rezone it to medical arts, behavioral science. So my original question is, who, who sides that are uh, uh, adjoining medical arts? The two sides are going to be <coughs> You talking about this area up in here, Cameron? The rest, the rest of the property. Let me zoom back in there. It's, it's, it's zoned commercial general now, surrounded. This is two streets and, and medical arts on two sides. You've got, you've got Industrial and commercial over here. But the people, the property is adjoining on medical arts. I mean, yeah, medical arts. That's medical arts at this splash right yeah, there. Okay. And the other two. All that's commercial and that's commercial. Yeah. But, and the street between there. Yes. Okay. So we can either. I think what he's talking, he's already done it. It's just over there. Yeah, I mean, we've already got the zoning and the new zoning. We just need the, the area depicted on a map. Right, that's all. Okay. That's it. And that's his desire, but it's commercial general, right? Huh? That picture in his desire, but it's commercial general. Is that right? The way I understand, he wants to leave that commercial general. And the other three small parcels on the, on the north side of that, these three would be would be caught up in the in the commercial general. I mean, uh, medical arts behavioral science. But he's not asking for any. Not that I'm aware. Well, actually, then there's nothing for us to do except except what it is. Yeah. Right, and and, and what if, of course there'll be a joint public hearing when this happens anyway. I just want to make sure there's no questions about it or concerns about it with this commission. But if it's already zoned commercial general, he wants to leave it. No, but we're changing the designation from medical arts to medical arts behavioral science. That's where the joint public here. Okay. All right. 
the next section is uh, the next uh, rezoning that we already know is going to be the uh, recreational park, uh, recreational lines. These, these are, are, are pretty simple. It, it's the stuff that we already know as far as as far as our parks, our playgrounds, uh, the Callan Drive Rec Park that you've heard about, uh, our recreational stuff that a rec department uses. Let me zoom in here to show you all some of the areas. Of course, that's the golf course at the far west side of town. Then you've got the river walk and playgrounds and all that down through there. And, and that's really, all you see highlighted right here is basically our parks, playgrounds, ball fields, uh, our town pools, town drive, our, our, our river walk continuation on up there on, on, the, on North Main, baseball field up there off the State Hospital uh, property. Uh, the ball field up there off, off of uh, Stage Street. And like I say, this this here is just depicting it on a map. Uh, since we do have verbiage in our zoning that controls the recreational part, uh, we just need to depict it on a map. And basically all we've got here is just our parks, playgrounds, our river walks, our recreational areas in town. Of course, We have not. But should we or not? Could That's the question. We used to use some of the school property, like for, for the recreation park. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Miss Freeman, this this ball field that's up here off the stage does belong to Smith County. If I if I'm remembering correctly, that area right there. I do believe that belongs to, to, the, to the, one of the schools, but we do let girls place off all there and stuff like that, and I do think we want to maintain it. So I did add that. As far as a high school, like the football field and stuff like that, I did not include that. What about the town pool? Town pool is included. Town pool is right here. There's the continuation of the river walk up on, uh, I think that's the river. Well, uh, my mind just went blank. Campbell. Campbell. At one time, uh, I know that they was talking in the in the council meeting that the property across from from uh, right here across the river was donated uh, across from North Church Street was donated to the town, and they talked about a possible park going in there. Uh, if that happens and becomes a recreational area, we can add that as well. Uh, probably got to be another public hearing to do it. But that's a terrible picture. I do apologize. Folks, I zoomed in to worship the Uh Let's go back over to this side and I'll show you a little bit. This area right in here was donated to the town. They talked they talk about making that part of the river walk. And uh, y'all probably can't see that, and I do apologize. Here's this area right here. That's the office of where the park is supposed to be? Yes. <coughs> so that you see that's town of Marion. They talked about turning that into a little continuation of the river walk. If they do that, get all that shored up right, and we can 
always had an unstoppable period and bring that to part of part of the recreational zone too. Is there any questions or concerns about about doing this on, on stuff that we know? Kind of comment on, on any of the areas, or should we add, or should we take some of that away? I know the dog park is up, up here off of Cowan. Uh, I did include that. And I do think that I got all, all the town stuff as far as the uh, 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 recreation. Includes all the parks, Chapel Hill Road Park, Osborne, um, other stuff that may have been. The little park that's, is it, is it still park that's across from Mount Cap, the South Iron? I don't, I don't know, do, do we do anything for that? We don't have to pay it, but I don't know who owns it. I have not included that. It's not our it's not the, it's not the towns. Uh, I think the Smith County Board of Supervisors. Yeah, yeah. Smith County School Board on it. I mean, I wouldn't object to bringing that in there if you think we need to, which is a recreational area. We probably have to get the permission from the uh, school board. Because right now I think it's zoned R3. I think it would be left up to the community to do with R3. Probably on our estimate. All that we are meeting that. Got this little tennis court on the way to the golf course. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all this area right in here. Any questions or comments? I guess my question is, and maybe we can talk about it before, is this just a discussion purposes and all? Yeah, or I mean, I'm just, bring, I'm just bringing it to your attention. These are the zones that we feel like. Recreational. The recreational zones, but they're, they're the, like I say, it's, it's the things that you do to go play, walk, exercise, and dance. Shelter over there too, right? On the yes, sir. By the river. Okay. Back in old river area. Okay. If I may ask, how is the new recreation? Is 
show of the progress down the drive. The last, uh, last time I was over there, the engineering firm was working on it, and uh, Bill has been working with it. Uh, has sent some preliminary drawings of what it may look like. Uh, you'll hear Bill, uh, Bill talk to Carson drawings. Uh, right now, the drawings, the last time I seen them, consisted of an adult baseball field, a uh, little league softball type field there, but there's going to be two baseball fields, a couple soccer fields. Uh, it, there'll be restrooms there. They're trying to utilize all the area they can over there for picnic shelters. They, they, they want to have a walking track all the way around the facility. Uh, from what I've seen, it's going to be it's going to be pretty nice. They're still they're still in the preliminary stages, trying to get it up to grade a rough grade, and before they turn it over to the uh, construction company, which actually going to do the final stuff and get all that. So it sounds like it's at Orange Kingdom. It, it, or maybe the last I heard Bill say in, in council meeting, he he expects it to be. Spring of 26 to be completed. I think that's what he said. The fitness center would have fallen under that. Fitness center is privately owned. Uh, if he would, if he would have approached the town, I mean, I think it would be, I think it would be reasonable if he if he would ask for it. Uh, but it is it is a private entity. R2 or R3? Actually, commercial. I think that's the apartments right there. So it's in commercial general. Yep. Yeah. 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 Anytime fitness, I thought challenge. It's in commercial right now because I think it says right here about oh. apartments. But what about the rents? Well, the center right now is on medical arts. You know, the reason therapy. I, I, not put, I did not put that in, in our recreation park uh, area. Your dog park? Did that be? Yeah. Dog park stand. Planning Commission agree on what we've got depicted here with our with our recreational and the medical arts behavioral science zones. We need to. Uh, we probably need to have a motion to, to uh, refer this on to, to council for their consideration. Uh, of course, there will have to be a public hearing. So, if you all make a motion to recommend this to plan to uh, council for consideration at the next council meeting, I will inform them of that. We'll set the we'll advertise it and set up another public hearing to to adopt these areas. I recommend that for me. Okay. Motion is set. Would you please repeat that motion? I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> and we refer this for direct. Recreation uh, map to the council for consideration. And yeah, the medical art and behavioral science. Any discussion? I just have one question on this to clarify. We talked about other locations. The location of underpassing, the location of underpass, what we know it as, is in the softball field. Okay. Right. 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 Right.
who owns that property? I mean, it seems like the town maybe owns or doesn't own, and then you can discuss that. You can discuss the county owns that land. I think it's county owned. So there it is. So the county owns it, it's not up to us to make that decision. And you're right, see, but I, I was thinking all along the town on that because we always make that in here. We can always make sure. I think it's county. That would be the only one I think they have. That would be the only one I don't have. Other discussion? Seeing no questions. All in favor, move to state. This is by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like to mention it. Carried. Okay. Yeah. So, at our next council meeting, I'll make the council aware of it. Uh, yeah. Then we'll we'll do the required advertising and see when they want to set the public hearing for that. All right, so here's a recap that we were talking about a month ago on the residential rental visual inspection that we were talking about. We've already got it in our zoning. I don't have the zoning in front of me uh, about the residential rental homes. Uh, but what we've discussed, we discussed the importance of being able to provide decent, safe, and sanitary living conditions for the tenant citizens of Marion. We discussed how uh, we have altered the initial title from residential rental inspection to residential rental visual inspections. We have determined and agreed upon the three inspection zones inside the town limits based on the number of potential rental properties flagged from our GIS data. Y'all remember how we did that, right? So we went on our GIS and we said, show us the approved land value of 5,000 to 10,000. And what GIS done was, based on that data, it highlighted a bunch of places. It might have been red, I don't remember. Then we went in and set another set of values from 10 to 20,000. I don't recall the exact dollar amount, but it's somewhere like that. And it highlighted it in, in another color. So once we got all these data points in on the queries on the GIS, you can start seeing these patterns of where the improved land value was five to 10,000, 10,000 to 20,000. You start seeing these patterns. So that's, if y'all recall, that's how we built our zone, okay? So the state code of Virginia said, you can't use the town boundary as a zone. You have to have designated zones. And I know it's been a minute since we talked about this and I am trying to speak from, from memory on a lot of this stuff. But that's how we set up the zones. Uh, we've discussed that you must obtain a rental certificate, certificate from the town of Marion in order to rent your property. We've, we have discussed the Code of Virginia section 36-105-1.1 rental inspection, rental inspection district, exemptions and penalties. We've discussed all that, we went over that. We've discussed the process of things we may be looking for during the inspection. Oh yeah, I do have a question. So on our on our GIS, whenever we run those queries on that data from the improved land value, those were your three districts for the most most of the of, of the uh, that data points said it was was in those three districts right there. So after discussing that, we I think this this planning commission decided that what we're showing right there, what we're uh, depicting wasn't unreasonable. Am I, am I correct in assuming this? I'm thinking that's what we're talking about. So this next thing that we've got up there that I'm, that's in your packet, is what we discussed on what our ordinance may may look like. Let me zoom in here for you, Josh, so y'all can see this. 
you know, much better it is. No, I can see it. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and feel free to come up where y'all can see it. That's fine. Um, all this right here that we've got proposed, I recall we went over three or four months of what this may look like. Now, none of this is official. None of it's been adopted. This is all the thing this is is a proposal for the town council. Okay. At the end of the day, the town council will either approve it, approve it with amendments, or can it off. I mean, really, that's their option. But this, I think, after we have we've talked about this for several months, but it goes on to talk about what what this code in our zoning in our in our code may look like. I do remember highlighting this section right here because we've got some parcels here in town that may or may not be in one of those zones that had one parcel but may have three or four rental properties on, on that one parcel. And I think when it, we said multiple single family rental units means any single parcel in which more than one single family rental unit is located. Now, I know, I can remember there was some discussion about that when we were going over this, but there was a place or two on the map that I think I pointed that out at. I think I might remember where it's at. Uh, It may have been something like this. See how that's one parcel, but you've got one, two, three, four, five, six addresses in it. That's sort of what that's referring to. Now I don't know that I just showed you. I don't even know if those are rents. I know that months months ago, uh, our, our <coughs> water department up here made us a query of every water customer in the town of Marion. It was hundreds of pages. We went through those one at a time, and what we've done on our map is we've run a query that said, the physical address of this property doesn't match the mailing address of, of the owner on record. Now, that don't mean that it's a rental. It could be somebody's parents that live there that's got lifetime rights to live there, but they really own it, but it's in somebody else's name. When we talk about this rental inspection thing, I can promise you it, it's going to take us a while to dial this thing in to where it runs smoothly. It's going to take some amending. It's going to take some, some going back and researching because really and truly, guys, all we want to be here is reasonable. We don't, you know, we're not trying to do something that isn't reasonable. But I do feel like that we owe it to the tenant citizens of Marion that they have a decent, safe, and sanitary living condition. Now, there's some stuff that I've been asked that I don't have the answer to. You know, that's why I bring it to, to all these committees, all these boards. What do you all think? I even ask the public sometimes, what would you do in this case? It ain't as easy as, as it sometimes seems it's, it is. Uh, but I can tell you that I'm not afraid to have a public hearing if we've missed it to, to, to make it right. You know, what I tell everybody, this is our first stab at this thing. This is our stake in the ground. If you're going to sell your home, okay, you're going to say, well, I want $350,000 for my house. Well, that's your start. If somebody comes up the counter off and says, well, I want to give you 350, but I'll give you 300. Okay, well, how can we meet in the middle? That's what this is all about. I can tell you some of the people that I've talked to that does have rental property here, that actually tries to maintain it, they really don't have a problem with it. Because 
because like I say, it's, it's been a little bit since we've talked about this, and I'm doing a lot of this from memory, and I did, I did go back and read up on some of the stuff we talked about, but uh, I don't think what we're asking for, and I do think it's on down here, it's in this packet, what we were talking about being able to, to look at, to what we're looking for. And there again, the only certified person we have to do that, licensed person that we have to do that, is Clay. He's the only one that's gone through and successfully passed all of the requirements for the state of Virginia to do this. Now, he can take someone with him to help them, but they can't make any calls. He's going to sign off on everything. On down through here, you will, I know we talked about what this might look like, what, what he would be really looking for. And I'll be the first to tell you, this, this ain't going to go to council in the next three or four months. We really need to take a hard look at this and see if what we're, what we're proposing is, is fair. You, you know what I'm saying? The fees, I, I think in the back of our count, in the back of our zoning right now, we have a fee schedule. And it's got that on there. And I think I've got a cost of $75 on there. But that it's not being it's not going to council yet. They might say twenty dollars. They might say fifty dollars. They might say just forty. You know, now all that's is to be determined. Well, that's just nice stuff, and I don't have I don't have to go ahead. Mark, you know. so you're talking about going inside people's houses and looking around with the property owner with us. Does that require a search warrant or anything like that? If the property owner's with us, I wouldn't think so. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking. Now, that, that brings up another point. I've had people come in my office say, well, it's illegal. Well, I mean, if the property owner's with you at the end, it's not illegal. But let's say we do have a property owner that says, no, you're not going to affect my property. And we have reason to believe that it is a rental property and it is inside one of those zones and it does show sign of deterioration or, or blight. If I mean at that point in time we could go get an affidavit or a search warrant or, or whatever whatever the state requires for us to do to, to to gain entry. Okay. But what we hope to do is have everybody's hey, you know, this is what we're doing it for. And, and there'll be a list of every everybody that, that signs up for this rental certificate thing will get a list of everything we're always going to look for. It's not like we're coming in blind or, or we're going in blind and trying to blindside us. You know, everybody's going to know what we're going to look for. And I think it's on here. Thank you for the health, safety, and wealth. And decent, safe, and sanitary. Now, I know the last time we were talking about this months ago, if if the property owner is with us, and we 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 will try our best to work your schedule. You know, if, if you're if you don't live in this state and you own property here, do you have somebody that's managing it that would, would allow would go with us and look at that? Okay. If you don't, could you schedule a time to come in here and, and do this? We don't want to have to go get warrants. We hope everybody feels like they maintain their property decent enough to, to, to pass what 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 you're going to be seeing here in just a second. Aren't you still typically checking on the property owner or the people rent? Well, you see, the property owner would be responsible for his property. Okay. Well, what if you got bad tenants? Here, here, now, here you go, Jerry. Here you go. I'm going to be the first to tell you I don't have an answer to this right now. That's why we're going to talk about this probably several more months before this ever gets passed. Because I feel like we have to have somewhat of an answer to be able to say when the council gives us that same question, what are you going to do in this case? Some people like to live like squads. Right <laughs> now, I don't have an answer to that. For instance, the building code says your ingress and egress in case of fire can't be blocked. 
So let's say Flav goes in one of these houses and, and, and the tenants might have, I don't know, trash, bags, tra bags of clothes, stuff blocking their door. That's absolutely a violation. But it's not the property owner's fault. It's actually the tenant's fault. Now, what Flav would have to do is say, Roger, I, can you get your tenants to move this out of the way? I, I mean, I, I don't know. But if I remember right, every house that we go in, because it is hard to get a contractor right now out within a certain amount of time, we're going to give them a two-year certificate right off the bat, but here's the things that we found that may not comply with whatever they come up, the council comes up with. Now, if you can't find somebody within two years, I believe that that would probably be a reasonable amount of time to get something fixed or repaired. If, if Roger's place was in one of these, and we say, hey, Roger, we've seen some banister that's loose here, and you had to get a contractor to do it. Okay, here's your two-year certificate, Roger. But if Roger gets it fixed in 90 days, he can call, he can call Flay and say, got it fixed, come back out and look at it, it's good to go, here's your four-year certificate. You won't see us again in four years. Unless, unless, I think we I think we talked about if a neighbor, the tenant, or the property owner requests another inspection. Let me say this: if a neighbor or the tenant calls us, say I've got this problem. The first thing we're going to ask them is, Have you notified the property owner? Because our next call when we hang up is to call Roger or whoever's got whoever the owner is and say this has been brought to our attention. They said they notified you. Are you aware of it? Never heard of it. First thing you got. Just make me aware of it. Could you check on it? Because we're not going to go back in because you got a, a tenant that don't like the property. So we're going to make sure that the, that the property owner is aware that we that, that, a, that a complaint has been made to us. Same thing with the neighbor. I've seen a bunch of rats around here. What have you noticed about the property? You know, most of the time, if, if, if there's a rat problem, if it's, if, it's, if it's a pretty decent property owner, they're going to go out and try to take care of it. Because it's their investment. But yeah, Jerry, to answer your question, there's some stuff that we're, we're going to have to talk about because I don't have the answer to right now. Because a lot of this is not property owner's fault. Yeah, that's why. I mean, no, it's not. No, that's a legitimate question. By the property no. owner, I don't want to get blown up for what was. That wasn't your fault. Yeah. Now, I will tell you that in, within the past two years, before I before I zoned this place, there was some like there was a lady that her and her husband, their first house was out here on Pearl, I believe it was. Their family grew, they got a bigger house, they moved, they moved off of Pearl into another part of town. They still kept the house, turned it into rental property. The husband always took care of it until he passed away. The lady come in, it was almost in tears, saying, you, you know, the renters are good, they pay the rent on time, but I've heard from, from neighbors of my old neighbors that a lot of stuff's going on up there that I don't agree about. I'm worried they're tearing my house apart. That's why we say that the property owner can request it too, because I think that takes the pressure off the property owner of us going in and say, we're going to, we, we've had a request, we're not going to tell them who, we've had a request to inspect this property. And there again, we always will have the property owner with us. So that will give that lady a chance to go in and see her house without her looking like the bad guy, if that makes any kind of sense. And then she can see what what condition it is. She can put her mind at ease and, you know, and, and uh, it'll look like the town did. Just I don't think that's unreasonable. Just heads up. They've also got renter's rights that they'll have to deal with. It's just between the renter and the property owner. Yeah. That's correct. 
And I think most everybody that has a contract nowadays, I, I would imagine it. But I think this is what we talked about of what we would be, be looking at on the exterior of the, of the structure. So the building exterior shall be, shall be in good repair, structurally sound and sanitary, including facing sockets, columns, porches, rails, deck. All wood and metal surface shall be free from holes, deterioration, rock, building paint, missing components. And out front of it, you'll see the Virginia maintenance code that, that, that dictates those, those items. Now, I think, I think my department is reasonable enough to know you, if we go out there and see a couple holes in it, if it's not pretty bad, I don't think you're going to get any paint on it. If you got some paint shipping, I don't think I don't think you're going to get any kind of write up on it. You know, it's got to be pretty substantial. The condition of the roof is is the deformed, is it sagging, is it missing shingles? You know, and there's the maintenance code that that dictates that. Chimneys, are they structurally sound and good repair? You know, if you go up there and half the chimney's missing, and the bricks are still laying on the roof and it's leaning, we're probably, that's probably a, a little bit of an issue, you know? No broken or cracked windows. Now, there again, just like the paint, I'd say unless you're missing paint or, or got a whole window out, if you've got a crack in it, we probably ain't gonna worry too much about a crack. You know, could we? Virginia Maintenance Code said we are, but I don't think we will unless it's completely missing or completely broken out. Existing gutters, downspouts must be good repair, discharging water minimum five feet. There again, you know, if you've got the little flip outs and you've got the little drain things out from your house, that's probably all we're going to worry about. Now, if the gutter's hanging down, we're probably going to say something. Hey, could you put a nail in that and put it back up there? I don't think what we're asking for is unreasonable. Foundation, no excessive cracking or shifting. Support structure should be free from any deterioration or rot. Cross face open shall be securely covered. And every one of these that, that I'm reading, the, the Virginia Maintenance Code is right there past it. That, that's what di dictates this, what we've got started from. If you all remember right, whenever we started this discussion, we got, there's all kind of localities throughout the state of Virginia that does this. And we try to take all of that, compile it to where we felt like it was at least reasonable for Marion. Some of the localities would open cabinets and look for dust. They would wipe their hand across it. That's not us. That's not us. You know, and, and I have asked several localities, has this been tried in court and how did it come out? A lot of it's not been tried, but there was some localities I talked to and tried and said they you know, they, their decision was upheld in court. So, I, you know, I, I don't worry too much about that. I just want to get something reasonable for Marion. I don't want to be unreasonable. And will this change? I guarantee once the town council adopts this with amendment or whatever, this will change. I, I mean, I'm just putting everybody on notice. We're not going to hit it out of the park the first time. And it might be more than one or two public hearings to get it right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. If we're talking about the exterior, uh, there's two examples that I'll give. On Cherry Street, Bill Thompson's empty house, mm -hmm. and on Lee Street, the corner of Gardens. They boarded up the windows. And I don't know how you can address doing something They took a fish to Hardy's, they took a sheet of plywood, they just laid it in there. Mm -hmm. They could have put it upright and made it fit in the windows and whitewashed it. Well, see, the state code of Virginia, Ms. Freeman, states that it has to be secure. In other words, you can't allow a child to go in there and maybe get hurt or something. Right. And that meets the definition of, of, of secure. You right, know. but it's the it's the, the appearance. Minimum effort. It, it's the appearance. It's the minimum effort. It, it, that's right. And it, it attracts 
from the overall appearance of the hair. I, I don't disagree with you.
Now, if you've got a window that won't close all the way, and the rain's coming in, the wind's blowing, the snow's blowing in, you probably need to fix that. All interior doors must be properly operable in good repair. Key locks are prohibited on the inside of bedroom doors. Now, that's a building code saying as well, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Cameron? Uh, and, and, of course, there's a Virginia maintenance code uh, section that, that goes up with that, too. Double deadbolt locks, locks that are keyed on the inside of doors leading to the exterior are prohibited. Screen and storm doors must have handles for proper closure. Uh, we just went and, and boarded up a house a couple weeks ago that had a storm door, but you had to put your hand where the screen went against the glass to open it. You didn't have a, didn't have a knob. Uh, check for any openings in floor covers that could cause drafts or access points for water seeping into the subfloor, since it's on floor level. All floors should be structurally sound, capable of supporting enclosed loads. All windows must operate properly in good repair and be able to open, stay open. Locks must work properly. Interior window wells flange must be free of chip, uh, free from chips or filling paint. And there again, you know, if you've got a couple of places, you're probably not going to get written up for that. But if it's considerable, then yeah, you might want to take a look at that and make sure it doesn't pay off. All interior service must be free from chip filling paint in good repair. Smoke detector requirements, at least one detector on the outside of the hallway in the vicinity of the bedrooms, one detector uh, installed in each bedroom, one detector on each floor of the dwelling unit. Hard wire or electric detectors must have battery backups. Uh, bedroom shall be at least 70 square feet, 50 square feet for an additional person. The minimum ceiling height for inhabitable spaces must be seven feet. Now, and I do think, I do think if a house was built under a different building code, that might, you might be exempt from some of this stuff. Bathrooms, sinks, tubs, toilets must be in working condition and able to safely perform their intended function. Plumbing properly installed, either a minimum of one operable window or a mechanical ventilation system is required. Here's everything under the kitchen. No leaks under the sink, traps installed, all kitchen electrical equipment in proper uh, in proper operating condition, stove and refrigerator if provided in proper working condition, exhaust over stove must be installed and properly working, hot water heater must be installed properly and vented if gas, with a discharge pipe installed on a pressure release, discharge pipe shall be plumbed within six inches of the floor or rather right through the floor and walls. All interior steps, railings, and guards must be in good repair. Mechanical units, heating and cooling must be installed properly and safely perform its intended function. Now, if, if the house doesn't have it, then they don't have to worry about that. Attics, if accessible, they will be inspected for evidence of roof leaks and openings that permits road infestment to entry. Uh, internal interior walls must be structurally sound and free from defects. Closed dryer vent exhaust to the exterior, not to the basement or crawl spaces. No excessive lint buildup on floors, walls, ceilings, or rim dryers cause unreasonable fire hazards. And right now, that's all we got. Now, I will tell you, I don't think what we've got is unreasonable. When you when we compiled all this data from all all of the of the uh, municipalities of Virginia that got mental inspections, theirs was much more depth than ours, but I don't think we're to that that level yet. You, you know what I'm saying? Now, if a property owner comes in here and says, well, this is not unreasonable, and this is why. And, you know, state his, his case. Hey, listen, we're all human. We're going to make mistakes. And if we can see their side of it, see why it's not why what we've got is unreasonable, then I don't think I don't see why we shouldn't be able to change that to to, to find that happy meet, meeting place where it's still decent, safe, and sanitary, but may not be as restrictive. I can tell you, I think when most people see this really start working, they're going to realize it's not as bad as what everybody thinks it's going to be. Yeah. You know, the only thing we want to do is get rid of the of, of, of the 
property owner that says, your rent's due the first of the month. Don't call me if you see the dirt or see Jesus. You know, that, that's just, that's what we're trying to avoid is just the part of where it's just a decent place. You know, and I think for so many years, it's, it's just been neglected and blighted and got to a state where, where it's, just, it's just gotten to that point where, I mean, I know a lot of people has got some health property here. One lady I used to deal with lived in Hawaii. She's never coming back. <coughs> She's never coming back here. You know, and, and she tries to find people that would maintain their property. But if you don't live here and you got to worry about somebody sending you your, your money for doing this and paying for I mean, that would be, I would have to question that as well. You know, if I was here as a contractor. That wouldn't override the grandfather clause, though, would it? Grandfather clause of what? Uh, when people get their inspections and they build their houses. Oh, no. I mean, they, if they were in that district, they would still be subject. Yeah, they still have their yeah. thing. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry that you're not, you don't live here, but you knew that when you moved to Hawaii. You still had property here. I mean, do you have a, a, an agent or somebody that can? Right. I mean, houses could be built in the. 1800s, 1930s. And I think that's built under different buildings. Yeah, right and so they they go by that code that they're built. But what you're saying sounds good, you know, sounds nice. But I, mean, I was I, just wondering if it would like override. I, said, I don't that. really know if, how it's going to work. It's going to evolve. Right, right. You know, but I, I do think that that as a town as a town of Marion, <clears throat> we want people to come here because of the stock, house stock that is decent, safe, and sanitary. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're asking too much. I, I really don't. Just to clean up. Just maintain your property. Yeah. Uh, this this is a proposed rental property application that all property owners that has rental property will have to fill out in order to get your certificate to be able to rent. It's just basic information, co-owner information, Property manager, there again, like the lady that's in Hawaii, she's had a property manager or somebody that goes by and checks on her stuff. That's who would list there. Because really and truly, what this is all about is if we don't have a phone number to call these people and their property burns down overnight, the only thing we can do if we don't have a phone number or email for them is send a letter to the last address we've got on file. We don't know if it's going to reach them or not. You know, if we've got their phone number here, we can call them up and say, hey, I'm sorry to inform you, but your house burnt down last night. Are you aware of it? Now, surely to goodness, let's say there's a house in this rental property that is a rental property, but it's empty and it burns. I, I wouldn't know right now how to get a hold of some of them other than a letter that might get there six weeks later or, or might not get there at all if they don't live there. So that's why I think it's important to at least have a phone number or email address or something where we've got pretty quick contact with them in case something like that happens. But all this here again, this, this could change. This is just what we're proposing. Here's the, here's the Code of Virginia that supports every bit of this. It's 36-105.1.1. It describes dwelling unit, owner, residential rental dwelling unit, Localities may inspect residential rental dwelling units. The local government body may adopt an ordinance to inspect residential uh, uh, dwelling units. Now, you recall in our current zoning, we've already adopted that. We're just trying to come up, how's it going to work? So we've already adopted that. Now we're just trying to figure out what's a reasonable way to make it work. Uh, so it talks, it goes on, talks about the, uh, the different zones uh, uh, for compliance with building code to promote decent, safe, and sanitary housing for its citizens in accordance with the following. Except as provided in B3, dwelling units shall be located in a real inspection district. So that's what we talked about earlier is our districts. And all that was based upon the GIS data under the improved property value. That means your buildings, any structure that's on the property, okay? So we set the zones up from that. Um, the local, uh, the rental, the rental inspection district is 
based upon the finding by the local governing body that one, there is a need to prevent to protect public health, safety, and welfare of the occupants of the dwelling unit inside the designated rental inspection district. Two, the residential rental dwelling units within the designated rental inspection district are either A, blighted or in the process of deteriorating, or B, the residential rental dwelling units are in need of inspection by the building department to prevent deterioration, taking into account the number of age, condition, residential rental units, etc. It goes on to talk about the other stuff. But here is one important thing that I do want to point out. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to determine where, where it's the approved value of the county lower. Then we spend a lot of time on, well, is this owner occupied or is this a rental company? And we still don't have the answer to that. We got a good idea. But like I said earlier, if, if somebody's parent is in this house and it's just in their kid's name, we're, we're not going to worry about that much because that's not our intent here. If it's owner occupied, then, then it is, and then it's really their house, right? But this right here says an individual residential rental dwelling outside outside of a designated rental inspection district is made subject to the rental inspection ordinance based upon a separate finding for each individual dwelling unit by a local government body that one, there's a need to protect public health, safety, uh, health, welfare, and safety of its occupants and the individual dwelling unit. Two, the individual dwelling unit is either blighted or in the process of deteriorating. Or three, there's evidence of violations of building codes that affect decent, safe, and sanitary living uh, for the tenant. So that's a big thing right there. So, you know, the code says we have to set up zones, which, which we've talked about. We've got a pretty good proposal that I think we can present to council based upon the GIS data. When you've seen all those highlighted places that kind of congregated in those areas, we said, okay, here's one zone, here's one zone, here's one. But it goes on, item number three right there says that a structure, if it's a rental structure and it's got tenants inside, it could possibly be included in this based upon those three things right there that I just read to you. So really and truly, any rental property in town of Marion could be subject to this if it seems in a deteriorated or blighted state. And folks, that's that's all I've got tonight. This is kind of just a recap of what we talked about, trying to get started back on this to see what we can come up with to present to council. We talked about this before. We have. It's been but a while. What's the, the tentative number of rental units in the town? We have a, or is that a is that a uh, estimate. That's been that's been a minute. That's been a minute. Somebody did not recall that. I know we were discussing. Uh, <clears throat> I don't recall from two hundred to two thousand. It was a lot. It was a lot. Did it run at that time? Yeah, that's why you got to get the Isn't it in our comprehensive plan? And I guess what I'm, I'm thinking it was. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just this conversation later, but my opinion is if we should town council go forward with this. I do know that we've done the work and we come up that data is there somewhere, but I just can't find it. I think it's right. in the comprehensive I think it's in the comprehensive plan. I make a comment. I'm just curious about some of this that we talked about, and you already know where my rental is. You know yeah. the condition mine's in. But now I'm curious where we're going to find rental properties for some of these people that are renting right now in stuff that there ain't no way is going to pass on this. Now I know they're here, and unless y'all are blind, you know they're here. But when you go to enforce them and 
when you enforce stuff like this on people that can't afford it, and and the people that are living there cannot afford higher rent. Now, the only reason I actually own rental property is because my mother-in-law couldn't afford to pay $1,000 plus for her rent. But when we start hitting some of these people, and I'm not going to say everybody's going to do that, but now some of these people are going to just let the building stay empty and go ahead and, you know, be contacted by town council or whoever for the condition of the property because it's not being maintained because there's nobody living in it. And they're going to throw a board up over the window like the ones downtown now. Now, I understand what you're trying to do. It's, it's good. Thank you. I don't have a problem with that. And you know my property wouldn't have a problem. But there's still a lot of people in Marion that's living beneath the radar in unhealthy conditions because they can't afford to pay more rent. These renters, the people that owns the rental property, could just turn around, let it run down, and see if the town of Marion wants to buy it and tear it down. Amen. Well, I don't mean that as a joke. I am being 100% serious here. If I had to hire a contractor to do the work that I have done on mine in the year and a half that I've owned it, I would already sold my places. Because and, you can't and, do and, it. And there again, Roger, I don't really have an answer for you. Right. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. We can't overlook all this. No, and I agree. I agree. I don't have an answer yet. You know, I, I know that it's come up. Okay, let's let's say and I don't know right off the top of my head where one's at, but let's say there's there's one that's that's really bad shape, and mm -hmm. and and we would we would say, okay, you've got a tenant in here. I want to issue you this two year agreement, okay? So you've got two years to fix whatever we find. And let's say he does. Let's mm -hmm. say the property owner does. And then let's say the rent goes up. Fifty dollars, hundred dollars a month. I don't know. Let's just let's say fifty dollars, hundred dollars a month. At that point in time, I, I don't have an answer, Roger. I really don't. But it is something we need to talk about because if it goes up, we we made the prop. We we have encouraged the property owner to maintain the property to be decent, safe, and sanitary. The property owner, if the rent goes up, I guess that is a, a subsidiary of what the town done. But if there's someone living in there right now, what happens? I, that, we're going to have to discuss that somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer for that. Heaven right forbid, now. mine ever gets to that point. But there is people out there that cannot afford higher rent, and. Since the college has come here, the rent here in Marion has gone astronomical. And you you can't afford to do a lot of this. And you know, you know I just fear it, people ain't gonna have somewhere to live. In a perfect world, which we're never gonna live in, I understand. This place would look like Maker. Mm -hmm. Everything would be nice, manicured, well taken. Of, all the street lights working. There, there are a lot of rental assistance programs. I'm not saying that's the thing. right, right. No, I but do understand that. For those people who are mm -hmm. desperate, mm -hmm. yeah. might be prepared for a lot more homeless people in Marion. Well, like, I'm curious, but you know, some people take care of stuff, and you got renters that would love to get rid of so they do more damage. Than they can. Well, you can get rid of them too, because no, I've been there they're too. They're always <laughs> real easy. <laughs> it's, on this way. it's easier than you think. <laughs> but, and, I mean, really, uh, y'all know that, like I said, since the college come in, you, they buy up cheap property, they throw a big coat of paint on it, and they raise the rent. But where did that person have to move to the first place? It's the only thing. You know, See, and I don't have an answer for that. No, I know that. that I'm just saying that that's I something. I mean, that is something, that is something and, and, and to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't mind at some point to get more public input on this because 
really what our job is, is we want to provide them with decent, safe, and sanitary living conditions. Roger's right. A lot of people might not be able to afford that. But I don't have the answer to that because it's the property owner that says, let me just say this. I feel like I've been here for 21 years. I feel like if this program had been going ongoing for 21 years, the EDA would not have had to buy 30-some properties within the last, I don't know how many years, last three years. Because I think at that point in time, this program would have been, all the all the, the rust box would have been ironed out. Because it's going to be rough for a while. But all the rust box would have been ironed out. And we would, we would have, at that point, held the property owner's hands. And I do that. I make that motion not really mean what I'm saying, but we we would have forced the property owner to at least maintain their home with these little things we've got up here. At least at that point, it would have been a gradual thing, maybe, but I don't have the answer. But what you're doing, though, is you're still punishing the people that actually has the rental property versus my next-door neighbor that doesn't want to maintain his home, but he don't rent it out, so he has no guidelines. And see, that, and that's the thing. If, if the property owner chooses to live like that, as long as it's not a a, a, a danger to others, mm -hmm. I, I mean, he, I guess he's got that right to live in a house with too many calls if he wants to. You know, the only thing we're saying is if you let somebody else live in this house, mm -hmm. you have to at least maintain it. Mm -hmm. To answer your question, Benny, I'm showing we got 1,028 potential rental properties in and that's all based on the GIS data. All those little red spots you see right there. Now, let me say this. You'll see a lot of this stuff uptown. We know those are not rentals. That's businesses. This is the property owner lives at. Take that 1,028. This is a ballpark here because a lot of those are not. Do you have any idea how many of that number are actually rentals? No. I can tell you that we have the, the handout that we got from the water department up here with the water, water, and we went, we done the research of the physical address and the mailing address. That's what that thousand twenty eight was, was based on. Now, how many of those are actual rental properties? There again, you know, when this happens and, and, and the property owners that's got rental property come to fill out that form that y'all seen there a little while ago be able to contact you in case something happens, all this, that, you know, if you get an agent to help you do this, who can be contacted throughout the state, if they fill all that out, that'll give us a pretty good idea, but there's going to be some legwork done. We will never, we may not ever get 100% of the rental property. Does this include the large apartment complexes too? So, our intent, Jerry, our intent is marrying housing and redevelopment. Just because it says Marion, people associate it with the town. It's, it's different. We said in some of our conversations with this panel that we think that if you got a, we, we would do 10% at random, pick them. We go in, if you got 100, we're going to look at 10. Now, I will tell you, they already do those. But I don't think it would be right if we didn't include them in this because we're making everybody else pick them. I think it's called it's in property. I think this is very different. Is it property a, a building that's got six apartments or that count as one property or six? That's one property. We would do we would do ten percent of that, so we would do more. If it's so got six, there's a lot more rental units. There's a lot more rental units. And that thousand twenty eight or whatever that number was. That's just the building. How many you said that that number could go well, up. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. This right here, this right here, Millerwood. Yeah. And so, so what we would do, so let's take Orchard Town, which is uh, part of Marion Housing, Marion Housing and Redevelopment. They are they are inspected. But if we go up our next, they got a hundred. We say, okay, we're gonna pick out ten, just random pick them out, go in, look, 
Look at what we had on that list. Okay, here's your four-year certificate. Here's your four-year certificate. Now, I think what we did determine was, like Marion Housing, they would only have to do the, the one, so they'd get one for Orchard Tower, one for Millerwood, one for Marion Manor, all that stuff. Instead of getting one for each unit, you just get one for each structure. Because we've gone in and done like, and I think this, and I might be wrong, but I can recall we said something about 10%. Who's going to do the inspection? Who's going to do it? Yes. Lane okay. Davis. He's the only one certified here that can do it. So he's a certified electrician. He's certified to DHCD. He, he's a certified building inspector. Okay. Well, in, in our purpose, many, many years ago, we was to discourage landowners, property owners, who were going to be slumholders. I mean, that was our purpose, was to start a process that would put an end to people offering below standard properties for rent. And that, that's been discussed for several years. Uh, I know when I was in Clay's position as code enforcement, we were talking about that. How could we do that years and years ago? It just kind of stalled. And, and, and with the new zoning, it, it, it did get adopted with this council. And our, this council thought that it was that it was wasn't unreasonable for property owners to maintain their, their homes. I, I can tell every one of you, and, and Rex, you know where it's at, right down below you. I don't remember the address. It's on South, it's on South Iron Street. The property owner lives in Maryland. The roof is completely caved in on it. The walls are starting to buckle. And it is going to fall. It is going to fall. They used to be pretty responsive. I know back when I was in Clay's position and I was code enforcement, every time I would contact them, they would come down and spend about a week. They would, they would tidy everything up. They'd cut all the uh, weeds and grass. They would, they would work on the house, but then, you know, over the years, it just stopped. Now we can't even get them to contact us back. Now, I don't want to get into the house condemning business. I, I don't want to do that. I don't think, I think that might be a little, could Flay do it? I think he's got, I think he's got the education and, and the certification to do it. I don't want to get to that, but what do you do in cases like that where they've not contacted us in five years and we send them letters and the house is a danger? What, what do you do? There's not even enough there to board up. Now, that's how bad it is. If you hit it with a hammer, the whole thing may come. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff right there that you would not want somebody to mess with. I'm sorry, you cannot mess and there are several places in town that has caught fire. And right now they've caught they've got tarps over it. Why? If if I was a property owner, I wouldn't want to leave my property like that ever. I, I don't I and maybe it's my mindset. I don't have that mindset. Why would why would somebody want to leave like that? But that's, I mean, like I say, I, I just think that what we were asking was not unreasonable. Now, will it have to uh, evolve? Into, I can promise you there's going to be bumps, potholes, everything else in this program when we first get started. But hopefully if we can continue it, we can figure out what we can do to make it run better. We can amend what we're looking at. Because maybe what we're looking at is just not reasonable. Uh, you know, but I can tell you that I think it's been needed here for a while. Well, I, I think the trend is going to be to more rental because people can't afford to build houses. I think I, I don't disagree with you. And I think you're going to see a lot more rental. And uh, young people are going to want a responsibility. They will start.
Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Any discussion? Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And I apologize about this thing over here, man. I don't know what we're going to do. You think so? You're right. You made a lot of sense. I'm going to That's what you got. You came up with good ideas if you just take them and Yeah, and we don't. We do, I, I don't have a faith I'll be, I'll be the first to tell you. You know, there's only there's one perfect document. It's the Bible. Something's going to come up. And see, so what my you do position, is you take steps and then you come back. My position here is if somebody thinks it's unreasonable, <laughs> come to me. And if you can convince me why it's unreasonable, okay, well, how can we, how can, I might not get 100% what I want. I'm trying, to, right. I'm trying to get this word out to everybody. Yeah. So they'll start coming to your meetings. You made it up. You know I'm not opposed to it, but oh, there no, is I, people out there that you're not going to be able to afford it. And a lot I, of I, sense. I, 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 I don't have the answer. Homeless is home, more homeless people want to stop there. Yeah. And uh, listen, my three brothers lived in conditions you would not believe, and they was other third property. Should have seen our first house. Had five kids, one bedroom, no bathroom. I had a conversation today with a citizen that said that somebody he knew, somebody he knew had a, uh, I think he lived in mobile home, but it was out in the county. And something happened to his septic, septic tank or something. And it was just uh, 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 made it, made it pumped out, right? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's filled out, uh, something happened. Yeah, and he like said it made he it he had called. He had called. Uh, he called the health department. The health department come up and said, "Yeah, that's, that's illegal." They sent health department sent the property owner a, a, a letter or something. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't reckon. I guess everything ever happened. So, and it, that's a bad that people don't live like that. In my opinion, of course. Uh, one thing about the, like I say, if people can't afford to live. You see, I knew a woman with two kids that had to live in her van. And you know, we, everybody's got a stake in the city. Yeah. Yeah. You made a lot of good sense. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, yeah. 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 my brother is the floor of it. It's the planning commission. And I don't know, it seemed like the. trying to do some good, but they're putting an awful lot of restrictions on a lot of people that could lead to more homeless, which I hope not. So, I know this was a really long video. Um, I just wanted to do the, about the properties around here. That's about it. I don't think I'll be doing more videos about Marion, but this is important so that people are not homeless or are being threatened or being thrown out on the street. So I hope we'll talk to you later and I'll try to make the next one where it ain't so long. <laughs>